Okay, I think we're going. Are we going? Can you hear me? All right, we're going. Ah, Easter Eve. Everybody have their tree up and their uh, their stockings hung uh, with care, something like that. <laughs> I can't keep I can't keep all the holidays straight anymore. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Easter is kind of a big deal on the island, I think. Last year we didn't have a whole lot of people come in for Easter, but two Christmases ago we didn't have very many people come in, but then last Christmas we were open that day, we had a lot of people in. So we'll see how tomorrow goes? Don't know. I have no idea. Um, had a, a pile of people in earlier today. And now we've got a, just a handful in right now. Um, I don't, I don't know what it's going to be like uh, for the rest of the night. This, this might be it. Might just be a few people, and that's about it. So we'll find out. Okay, uh, I'm going to go and check and make sure my stream is working, and I'll be back in a minute. okay to me so let's see we've got uh what's going on in here so big lebowski developed issues um the solenoid that drops the ball for bowling uh that burnt up and then there's a shooter lane diverter and that's uh you can you can it diverts up into the upper um little play field. That one burned out for no reason whatsoever and oh sorry I thought I heard a thought I heard a machine cycling for a ball. Um, yeah so that that burned up for no reason whatsoever. So uh, Dutch Pinball sent me replacements for that. I got those in yesterday. They also sent me kind of a sneak peek on the code update that they're working on, which um, lowers the voltages of some of these solenoids that I had problems with. So I've got that installed in the machine. Uh, so far, nothing's caught fire. <laughs> Everything seems to be working. Um, uh, what else is going on? Um, we've, we've been busy all week because it's on the island. It's um, it's spring break, so all of the kids have uh, had the, the they've had they had last Friday off. Well, what date was that? That would have been the they had the twenty second Friday the twenty second off. Then they've had this whole week off, and then they have Monday the first off. So we've been open basically the whole time. I didn't do a stream last week uh, just because I was half exhausted. And I had something going on with my sinuses. I felt like I had a bunch of nails in there. Uh, it hurt quite, uh, quite, quite a bit. Then I got home and blew my nose, and a bunch of nails came on. I felt a lot better. No, <laughs> I have no idea why that. Uh, uh, Spike says, "Why do some coils last for 60 years and others six days?" I think I know why. In this case, it sounds like. So the one for um, launching the ball towards the bowling pins, I had shown some kids how to do the bowling type thing where you can just go in and play bowling. And they just, they were bowling, bowling, bowling. And they played like six games of 10 frame bowling, one after the other. And they were just repeatedly firing this ball. And I think that the coil was it's probably overpowered for the action of just pulling down this little thing i i have since i just had it at default strength 
I have taken that all the way down to nothing. So it's at the lowest possible setting and it still works fine. So that's one of the things that Dutch Pinball has done is that they've lowered the default voltages for these coils. Um, but I think I, I think part of it is just that um, the uh, the software doesn't have a cool down period kind of thing, I guess. But then you know, like I have Luca, which is just chugs along. I think that those coils though are wrapped a little bit different, so there's not a whole ton of power going through those. But I've had I've had six year old coil smoke just as quickly as always. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, so we've just angered the coil gods. I think that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, so Valhalla smoked a cup a smoked a coil or two in there. Um, and that one was due to repeated firing. So I don't know why you, you would put a coil in that couldn't handle repeated firing. It's like limper coils, they, you, they flip, 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 and the coil, like it doesn't melt down unless something actually, like unless it just engages the, the high voltage. So why for something like that, why don't they just do a winding that's similar to a flipper coil if it's something that might fire kind of consistently? So I don't know. Uh, Spike says, I've lost all face in magnets now. Don't get them wet, because if you get magnets wet, that ruins them, apparently. <laughs> well, I got, uh, what else did I do? I got, um, I got a Neo Geo in over there. Um, Sophia has wanted uh, Puzzle Bobble, or also called Bustaboo. She's wanted one of those for a long time, but we've looked, we just haven't stumbled across one. So someone I know was selling the Neo Geo single cartridge cabinet and board set and everything um, just locally. He's had it for a while and he offered it to me probably four months ago. But we had a bunch of other stuff going on and I didn't want to bring another, another cabinet in. And uh, so since she's in, in BC right now, I thought it'd be kind of nice to get her that machine so when she comes back it'll be all ready to work, right so i found the machine and then um we brought it in here and it was running fatal fury i think is the name of it lethal fury i don't know some beat em up game uh kind of like um uh like mortal kombat -y sort of thing or street fighter kind of game so it has something like that in it. and then i i found a place online that was selling the, the, the cartridge for Puzzle Bobble, Bust a Move, and um, the little marquee insert that I need. I haven't put the marquee insert in yet, but I put the cartridge in. So it's all running and everything's great. And um, that's actually a really fun game. Like, I forgot how much fun that game is. Um, it's, it's one of those just sort of early basic game. It's, you know, it's sort of like a Tetris sort of thing where it's, it's easy to understand what you're supposed to do, and then it just kind of gets consistently harder and harder. And, and then sometimes the deal of the, there's like, I think five or six different colored balls that you're shooting up, and when you, when you get three of the same color, then they all explode, and anything attached to them falls. The thing keeps moving down, when they get down to you, that's it, you're done. And then, I had one game where every ball that they gave me was the color that I needed. And so I was just like cruising right through all the different screens. Um, and then someone came in and I had to walk away from it. Drag. Uh, but I've had other ones where you're playing it and every ball they give you is like the opposite of what you need. So you have to kind of pile them up off to the side or something. Um, yeah, it's a great game. I really like it. So I think that's a good addition. I've seen a lot of people over there playing it already. So, 
And uh, there's a couple other cartridges that we can get for that. I think what I might need to do is just get another Neo Geo cabinet because there's a couple of really good games that were in the Neo Geos. And um, uh, instead of having like a Neo Geo 2 cartridge one, I think I'd rather just have two different cartridges running the game consistently. So. And there's Rebecca Likes Music. Are you doing this or are you doing this? Because this is a whole lot different thing than this. <laughs> I have to go and end a couple of games. These are driving me nuts. I'll be right back. That's better. A couple of games that when they're just sitting there running, they drive me nuts. And the little music and break, so break shot starts to get to me after a little while. Um, let's see other one. Uh, Secret Service bugs me too. It does sort of the spy theme. God, what is that? It's, uh, it's I don't think it's Mission Impossible. I forget what little melody it plays while it's sitting there waiting. But yeah, those two kind of bug me. Uh, Rebecca says, hope everyone is doing well today. I am doing well. It was a very busy day today. It's slowed down. I'm tired. It's been a long week, but uh, it's all good. It's been, you know, busy days are good days because well, we make money. <laughs> and any day that we make money means the day that I can buy a new machine. So we've, we've decided, so Sophia and I were talking, we... We wanted to try to get like one really big new game every year. It's not bad. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a different root beer. It is. With I when I first tried it, I was like, okay, it's kind of like root beer. It's kind of like sarsaparilla. It's kind of like what is that that I'm taking? Oh, it's a little bit of Jagermeister, kind of in the background, right? Like a little aftertaste of yeah, yeah, just I can see, I can yeah. See <laughs> uh, oh, uh, yeah, so we we wanted to buy like maybe one new game, good game a year, not just like, you know, grab some double stern or something, but, you know, really, really buy something that sort of stands out, like Big Lebowski kind of thing. So we're trying to think of what to do, and uh, I'm not completely sold on Galactic Tank Force yet. Um, I've heard positives and minuses about that one um but i was thinking you know maybe what we'll do let's look backwards instead of getting a new machine let's just get a good old classic machine that you know one of the ones that she's really wanted and i think would do really really well in here is uh jersey jack's wizard of oz i think that that would appeal to a lot of the players that we have in here they, they would be attracted to that the other one that I was just thinking of, and she was in BC at a at a place called Pin Hollow, which is in Victoria, BC on the island. And they have a bunch of games. And the one one of the ones that she played was um, uh, the Indiana Jones Pinball Adventure one, the Williams one, the blind body one. That's a great game. Um, so I think those are the two I'm gonna start looking for and maybe try to get it sometime after summer. Um, uh, I'll, I think I'll wait until summer's over. And, well, it depends on if something shows up, but all of those are uh, both both the Indy, Indiana Jones one and the um, Wizard of Oz. Those, are, those can be pricey, so I guess if we find one in really good shape for not too terribly much, then we'll get it sooner than 
later. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Spike's trying to sound Canadian. He said sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's you you're trying to be Canadian, you're you're bitching about Justin Trudeau and, and saying sorry. <laughs> Diner. Oh, there, there she is. There's Sophia. Diner. Diner's not a. Diner's a. a that's that's a System Eleven, I think. So we can usually find those for not too terribly much when they do come up. That's that's like a you know maybe a four grand machine instead of a ten grand machine, ten grand or more machine. So yeah, Diner would be a good one. Any of the System Elevens. I really want to. Uh, uh, F14 Tomcat one, those are brutal, and a getaway, and a diner, and a taxi, like all of those kind of classics would be great, but Nancy would love a Gone with the Wind machine, <laughs> and they, they make it, it's called Whirlwind, <laughs> that would be fun to take Whirlwind and, and retheme it as a Gone with the Wind. <laughs> I had I had joked about doing a retheme, taking a, an old Kiss like the 1978 Kiss machine, and retheming it to ABBA, and I actually have a stripped Kiss playfield that I could repaint into an Ab ABBA machine. I thought that would be really really funny, and then I saw something somewhere about they're actually thinking about making an ABBA machine. I was like, oh, they stole my idea. <laughs> I don't know who was that was making it. Let me look. Let's see if I can figure it out. I have a pinball machine. Pinball Brothers. Looks like it's just a rumor right now. So I don't think there's an ABBA. No, I don't. I can't think of an ABBA pinball machine. When I do a search on it, it doesn't ABBA. There's a virtual machine. There's an ABBA virtual machine, but I don't think that there's ever been a, an actual one. We look and see the virtual machine. Let's see images. So this is, uh, let me let me come over here, browser. So this is funny, there's, here's a picture of the ABBA machine, the virtual pinball machine, the ABBA machine. You can see there's, there's uh, what, five drop targets here. There's this row of lights here. There's this row here. But then you go over here and here's a Triumph pinball machine. And it's the same, here's another picture the same layout right so it's like this generic there's three pops up here there's one two three lanes at the top it's like this generic play field that you can skin with something else is that the same as this heavy metal one here uh, no 
Oh, that's different. This one has this row of lights here. Yeah. So, yeah, no actual ABBA one. Whoop, we'll go back here. Same stuff, different box. That's it. Yep. Yeah, what else is going on? Let's see what else is going on. Um, I have to rebuild my hurricane power supply. It's been slowly, slowly getting worse and worse. <laughs> and it, it takes a while to warm up before the the uh, DMD is full color or, or is fully uh, fully populated and today I turned it on and it was almost black there's just like four pixels running <laughs> and uh, after about an hour it sort of got a little bit better I, I think I think it's all the way done now Yeah, it's just got a little bit that uh, kind of in the middle that doesn't doesn't populate out. But yeah, so I've got everything I need to rebuild it. I just need the time to do it. So hopefully it'll hang on for another handful of days. And there was something else that I noticed in here too that I needed to do. I don't remember now. I haven't had a chance to look at... Um, Starship Troopers any deeper than what I did originally. And then uh, Blackwater is still acting funny. It's not the power, it's not the board. I think it's a switch matrix problem. It's just acting really, really strange. So, um, and s strange science is a switch matrix problem, but I haven't found the issue yet. It's, it's, it could be on the board itself, and I just haven't gone uh, gone up to the board yet. I've checked everything underneath the playfield, but that's going to take a little bit of um, a little bit of time to determine that one. I ordered um, a whole bunch of candy from a new vendor. Uh, Someone was in here the other day asking about, we have these. We have both of these. So we have, oh, hold on a second. All right, this one's working. This one? This one, yep. Five balls per game, but because it's old, you have to use a ball lifter to lift the ball up every time. Ah, uh, okay, thank you. All right, so we have these Popeye sticks, and we have these little fake candy cigarette kind of things. And uh, so someone came in the other day, and they were asking, uh, she asked if I remembered that they used to make ones, little fake candy cigarettes, in in a pack. Inside the pack was uh, a foil, like the the candy cigarettes were wrapped in a foil kind of thing, like in a foil package inside. The sticks were chocolate with a paper around them. I had never heard of those. I'd never seen them. So I did as I do, and I dug around for a little while and um, found some. So I ordered them. <laughs> so I, I figured not to be outdone. I ordered uh, two boxes of different flavored uh, bubblegum cigars just you know I mean if we're gonna go for the, the fake tobacco candy products we might as well <laughs> might as well you know, go all in right and so well there's there's actually a did I order them or not there were bubblegum just just like the the they were just like these 
but these are like a, a hard candy thing. But they made bubblegum ones just like this too. And let me see, did I, I can't remember if I ordered them or not. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Spike says the chocolate ciggies were so, I, I don't remember them. I mean, maybe, maybe when they come in, I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember these, but I, I don't remember them at all. The ones that I remember were, um, they were a hard candy and, and the bubblegum ones. They were wrapped in a paper and between the candy or the bubblegum and the paper was a dusting of um, powdered sugar. And so you put the thing in your mouth and you blow and out would puff out a, a thing of uh, powdered sugar. So he was like, look, I'm smoking. And, you know, of course, some dumb kids too would like inhale. <laughs> I remember doing that. Let me see, did I? Or I'm, I'm sorry, I have to look this up because I can't remember if I ordered the, um, the bubble gum ones. So we got two boxes of the cigar ones. I got the Garrett's chocolate cigarette ones. Oh, I didn't get the gum ones, so I, I don't know why. So I got those, yeah. But, so one of the things I thought would be really hilarious, and I'm gonna look for it, is I'm gonna see if I can find like an actual, like smaller cigarette machine. Maybe one that's not very deep. Um, because I think it'd be hilarious to sell candy cigarettes out of a cigarette machine. So maybe I can maybe I can dig one up, and find one. There was one actually. No, I got a lot. Am I logged in? Okay, I'm live. So there was one. On. Facebook Marketplace. Let's see, can I? Oh, you can't see that window. Sorry, old place. 1950s National Cigarette Machine. Uh, it looks like it would be the right size. Maybe. It's not, it's not very thick. It only looks like it's maybe 10 or 12 inches thick. And maybe about 4 feet tall. try something here. I can't, I'm logged in, it's on Facebook, I'm logged into Facebook on a different browser. Let me do this, let me save that picture and then I can go here and I can go can I open the picture here? Oh, I know what I can do. I can do this. Image, create new image, browse for image, desktop image, this image, and put it right there on the screen. It's that, that thing. Yeah, cool, huh? So, uh, that might work, but it's it's expensive. The guy wants like fourteen hundred bucks for it, and I don't know. For such a stupid gag, <laughs> the kids buying their fake cigarettes in, a, in an actual old pinball or an actual old cigarette machine. I don't know if that's fourteen hundred dollars worth of fun gag or not. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> hey. 
Yeah, it looks cool. It's a it's a really cool thing. Um, it's got a mirror that says cigarettes on it. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It takes eleven different types of packs. So you could the the candy cigarettes come in. I think they have like four or five different brands. But it's just wood. Would they eject out properly? I don't know how it's how it works. If it would actually work, if they're a little bit, if they're too small. But you know, back in the day, they had um, they had king size ones. So I'm looking at this, and it looks like it had Camel without filters, Winston's and Marlboros with filters. So you must be able to adjust it somehow so that it'll take it. I don't know. I'll keep my eye out. If I come across something uh, super cool like that, I just think it would be fun. I'll be right back. Hold on. Matthew, hey Matthew, how's it going? We had kind of a fun thing happen today. We had a bunch of people in, and I heard this loud kirk clang. I was like, what the hell was that? So along the back wall over there, um, you can see them in this picture at the back. Along the top, the, the rectangles that are uh, the black light. And there's, what, one, two, there's five or six of them on that back wall pointing out. And they're just these thin little LED panels. They're about this big, they're about this thick, have a heat sink on the back, whatever. So apparently the glass fell out of one of them, just out of the blue, fell down. It landed uh, on on the glass of Starship Troopers. And uh, the Kerlang, Kerlang, that I heard was actually the glass that fell out of the out of the black light, and then there's a little like metallic shade thing that sits in there too, and that fell out as well. Nothing broke, uh, luckily. But yeah, that was just like fell right out of there. <laughs> so it doesn't really need it. I mean, it's it's high up enough that nobody can get their fingers in it. Um, there's some, it's hiding some electrics and stuff like that, but, um, probably a little high voltage maybe, I don't know, I'll, uh, I'll climb up there later and I'll put the glass over it. I've got a bunch of, uh, double-sided tape and some extra tape and I'll just kind of clamp it in place, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> luckily, luckily Starship Troopers was not working at the time because that would have landed right in someone's lap. When they were playing it, so. <laughs> Kirk Langs are never good. Well, sometimes they're good. <laughs> Grandma used to make a lovely Kirk Lang. We'd have it after dinner. Yeah. Ruckus. Yes. Yeah. 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 Bit of a ruckus. Oh, I see how it works. It's so it's it's Easter Eve. Uh, I'm uh, I've got my tree up. 
Um, I've hidden eggs on it. Uh, I've sacrificed a bunny. We did that earlier today. I don't know. <laughs> 80 Fahrenheit. I don't know how. 80, 80 F. 80, 80 freedom units. Freedom temperature units. How hot is that? 80 F to C for Canadian. That's 26 degrees Canadian. 26.6 degrees Canadian. That's hot. Your Canadian money, that's hotter than the surface of the sun. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, what did I do? Oh man, I just killed my chat. I don't know a lot of the camera. Alright, hold please. While I figure this out. Yeah. Really the chat. There it is. It's back. Chat is back. Does it let me type? It lets me type even. Very cool. This is so high tech. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be too hot for March, says Sophia. I don't think I'm going to be streaming for a couple hours today. I, I don't have it in me. I'm just too tired. Um, yesterday was nuts, and today was a little nuts. I just want a nap. I'll climb right down there and have a nap. But I'll go, I'll go for a bit over an hour. And, uh, yeah. Spike, were you in like California or something like that? Isn't that I I, I'm, what I, I recall? Maybe, maybe not. I don't remember. Tennessee, below freezing on Wednesday. 75 freedom units. How many how many Canadian units is that? 75 freedom units is 23 Canadian through 23 almost 24 Canadian units. I don't know what it's been here. It's been It's been cool. It was supposed to snow today. Let me look it up. It's one Canadian outside right now, one Canadian temperature unit which converts to 34 freedom units. And it's supposed to rain or snow tonight. They haven't decided yet.
Smoke break. Smoke break. <laughs> uh, Freedom wow. Eunice was the name of my all naked head digit cover band. <laughs> Cat snatch fever. You know what's funny is that uh, uh, I never really liked Ted Nugent, but there was one one song that I liked, a Ted Nugent song, Stranglehold, which I only, well, somewhat recently, I didn't know it back then, but I, I like it because he didn't sing it. <laughs> Someone else sang it. <laughs> but I didn't know that he didn't sing it. I just, that was the only song that I liked of his, but. The rest of his songs are just kind of too creepy, you know? It's like, hey, she's 13 years old, and she's hot. It's like, nah. Cocaine crabs. What's a cocaine crab? Snow crab. Rock lobsters. <laughs> Saw Ted Nugent at Billy Bob's in Fort Worth, Texas. So it was awesome. He was probably pretty crazy to see back when he used to wear a loincloth and swing around on vines on stage or whatever the hell he, <laughs> whatever he used to do. <laughs> was he eating a dead deer? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably what he does. I don't. Does he even play music now? I think he just kills stuff. I don't. I don't think he actually plays anything anymore. Let's look up Ted Nugent. Oh no, that's oops. I spelled it. I spelled it Ted Nugent. <laughs> Ted Nugent live. Alright, so there's a article here. Guitar.com from uh, July 21st last year. Uh, he's not. He won't tour anymore because he has an unhealthy attachment to his dogs. So I don't even want to know what the hell that means. <laughs> <laughs> I get such a weirdo. I don't know. I'm, let's just assume that he means not what we're thinking he means. No! <laughs> no! Ted Nugent. Hey. Ted Nugget. <laughs> If I make a candy bar, I'm going to call it Ted, Ted Nougat. It'll be filled with sweet Ted Nougat. And nuts. Oh, you know what I was going to do today? I was going to make a live streaming sign. I have my, my little glowy sign. And I was going to change it to say, uh, I'm not crazy, I'm live streaming. Because people still look at me and they're like, why is he talking to himself? And they don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Baby Ruth, baby Ruth, baby. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I want a pizza. I wonder if I should get a pizza tonight. There's nobody over there. It's not like they—they're not making pizza for anybody else. I think I might do a pizza tonight. Contemplating it. 
Can you tell? This is this is the do I really need a pizza face? <laughs> do I really need a pizza face? <laughs> that was a that was a Lady Gaga song, wasn't it? We make chicken wings while we watch the cocaine crab sing. What is this cocaine crab thing that you guys are talking about? Do I need to goo goo that? Cocaine crab. From outer space. It is a movie. Cocaine crabs from outer space. Group of fraternity boys can force feed them cocaine, which triggers an instinct for the crabs to kill. Leads to a series of mysterious deaths. It doesn't sound very mysterious to me. It's obviously the cocaine crabs. So see also cocaine bear and cocaine shark. <laughs> oh man. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> I I haven't seen Cocaine Bear yet. I uh I actually I have I've downloaded it. I have it. And then I, I heard it wasn't all that great, and I just haven't gotten around to watching it yet. I'm kind of hoping that they, they're going to do like a riff track of it or something. That's how I get through most of my bad movies, is riff track will, will do something and I'll be able to sit there. I, I would never have sat through Titanic were it not for riff track. Uh, I actually made it through, no this is funny, I made it through all of the Twilight movies by way of riff track. But I couldn't make it through any of the Lord of the Ring movies. I just, I tried really hard. They just, I, they put me to sleep. And even with Rift Track, I couldn't, I couldn't make it through it. Now I have to watch. I have to see Cocaine Shark now. Originally released in Japan under the title something something. It was renamed in order to profit from the re release of Cocaine Bear. Ah, oh, forget it. Then. Oh, but wait a minute. This was this was the other movie they wanted us to check out. <laughs> Meth Gator. <laughs> <laughs> also known as Attack of the Meth Gator. Oh, it's, it's brand new. 2024 American action film. It is a mockbuster of the cocaine bear. Uh, produced by the Asylum. So the Asylum is a is a company. They put out all like just the complete wacky weird stuff. Terminators. These are the ones that like I think they just get pushed directly to like Amazon and stuff. Back in the old days, they would have been uh, in the video stores, you know, just the little, the shitty little ones that look like they're an actual movie, but they're not. <laughs> yeah, I have to, I have to see if I can find Meth Gator. That might, that might be worth watching. Although, the Wikipedia page doesn't have a plot. 
<laughs> it just says it's, it's, it's a film. Here's who's in it. They produced it. And that's about it. No plot. <laughs> it is 90 minutes long. <laughs> Spike says he has a neighbor in San Diego who is a meth gator. <laughs> Methany gator. She smelled of chum. No plot, just meth gator. Yep, no plot. Yep, smoke break. <laughs> I need to go next door and decide if I'm going to have a pizza or not. Yep, smoke break. <laughs> oh, I have to answer this email. Sorry. Give me just a second. I think we are going to be slow for the rest of the night. Didn't know if we'd, uh, if we'd get it, you know. These guys are here until 9.50. And it is 9.16. That's 9.16 Canadian time. That's not freedom time. And I just had an email about someone wanting to do a big birthday party, so... Maybe they'll do that sometime. Well, probably not tonight. If they want to do it tonight, they should have emailed me earlier. Still thinking about that pizza. Should I get a pizza or not? Pizza? Okay, you guys you guys figure it out. I have I have food I can make at home, or do I want a fresh, melty cheesy pizza made for me? What do you think? <laughs> Cold oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> Cold three day old oatmeal with corn and raisins, or a fresh, steaming, piping hot, melty cheese pizza. <laughs> All right, we have one vote for pizza, not six day old oatmeal. Dry, dried oatmeal, uncooked oatmeal in a bowl with raisins and corn nuggets <laughs> or pizza. I'll do whatever you guys say. I'll, if, you, if you want me to have the pizza, I'll have the pizza. You just have to say, get pizza. But, you know, if you really, I, I'll eat the cold, old, uncooked oatmeal that's been sitting on the counter for six and a half weeks. Um, that has prunes in it and chicken strips. Six month old chicken strips. Or I'll have a lovely pizza that's warm, delicious. <laughs> Matthew says coconut. <laughs> Alright, I guess I think I'm having a pizza. <laughs>
<laughs> you might hallucinate if you eat the oatmeal. <laughs> the six month old chicken strips and prunes and <laughs> I don't even know if we have oatmeal at home. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know, Sophia. I was just sitting here thinking that I I got home so late last night because I was making that video and and uh, Chris was actually in here. Um, so as I was waiting for the video to render, he and I were playing Big Lebowski until I don't know eleven thirty or something. That's how. That's why I got home so late. But um, and then it took. It wasn't until. Got almost one before I ate dinner. I'm just thinking, maybe, <laughs> what have you been doing while well, I've been away in the kitchen? Yeah, I, I haven't been doing the dishes, apparently. <laughs> no, I have been. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go order a pizza. I'm going to set my mic down. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. Smoke break. Not a, I was just ordering a pizza. <laughs> Besides, it's, it's it's I'm doing math. I'm going I'm going in the back to do math. That's what keeps me awake and up. I am a I'm a meth gator. <laughs> Where's my coffee? Oh, there it is. Coffee, 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 coffee. All right, more coffee. So look at this, look at this. Look at how much hair I'm getting, crazy. The other day, uh, so Sophia was like, grow your hair out. I'm like, okay, I'll grow my hair out. And then she's like, I gotta go to BC Bye. And so I'm waiting to, I wanna shave my head, but I'm just waiting uh, until she gets back before I shave it. So the other day, she's got a bunch of hair dyes and stuff like, blues and greens and reds and all kinds of other crazy colors and uh, so the other day I'm like I'm gonna dye my hair blue <laughs> so I, I found the hair dyes I left there's some blue hair dye I'm like awesome 
So uh, I, I started with just a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'll just do some tips and stuff, and I'll, I'll just kind of goof around with this, right? And uh, uh, so I ended up doing, you know, pretty much all of it, and I let it sit for this prescribed amount of time, like 30 minutes or something like that. And then when I went to wash it out, it all fell out. It like, not my hair, the color, like it, none of it really stuck. And I think it's just, the probably the dye is old. Plus I have, um, I have like a little bit of a product in there, so it probably protected it, right? But yeah, it was uh, kind of a bummer. So I just have a very, very light, you, can, uh, you can't really see it, but in, in the sun, in the right light, you can see just like a little hint of blue in there. But it definitely isn't like, you know, clown vomit color. So we'll, uh, I'm going to wait to shave my head. I'll wait till Sophia gets back. And uh, then we'll dye it blue, proper blue. And uh, then, uh, then it's going to have to come off. It's already driving me nuts. I can't. Uh, I'm, I'm not used to having hair. And it just feels weird. <laughs> And I, I don't like the, you know, the whole, like, having to mess with it. Like, you have to wash it, and you have to comb it. You have to put shit in your hair so that it, like, doesn't go like this, you know? So, then, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get rid of it. But we'll, we'll hold on to it for now. Not that I have a whole lot left, but... All right, so my pizza is in the oven. They're making me a pizza. With lots of extra cheese. No old oatmeal. And let's see, we've been going for an hour now. I think I will... Uh, I think I'll go for at least another 20 or so minutes, and we'll see how it goes. I just, I don't feel very... Um, uh, entertaining. <laughs> I'm just sort of <laughs> sort of tired and just hanging out. Let's let's look up uh, other fantastic asylum films. List of asylum films. So their first one was a, a movie called Belly Fruit. What the hell is this? Belly fruit. It's oh, it's about teen pregnancy. <laughs> I guess I guess that's something you can call it. <laughs> Belly fruit. <laughs> All right, no, I don't want to watch that. Uh, Four plays scarecrow, the source. King of the Ants, Scarecrow Slayer. That looks fantastic. Uh, Vampires vs. Zombies, Alien Abductions, War of the Worlds, Dead Men Walking, Snakes on a Train. <laughs> Because, of course, they did Snakes on a Train. Plot. Taking the same basic idea from Snakes on a Plane, many deadly snakes loose on a train. Okay. Da Vinci Treasure, Halloween Night, Exorcism. Alien versus Hunter. Invasion of the Pod People, Freak Show. Let's go wait. It says apparently they. I think they got sillier as they got older. Uh, Egg Led Dawn, Sharknado. Little Mermaid. <laughs> Their fifth animated film, Little Mermaid. Wait, this is, wait, this, what, what is this? Battle, Star Wars, Homeward. What am I looking at?
listed under lists of asylum films. But some of these, wait a minute, I'm so confused. Battle Star Wars, Homeward. Ape versus Monster. Titanic 666. That sounds fantastic. 110 years after the sinking of the original, the Titanic 3 begins its maiden voyage to the original wreck site when strange things begin to occur. Death Gator. Yeah, I guess I was just confused. I was confused at what I was looking at. It, that's a lot of movies, though. So I've, I've seen some of the Sharknados. I've seen the first, I think the first and the second Sharknado. But I haven't really gone past those. And uh, apparently they did a real Game of Thrones thing where at the very last Sharknado, it ended up just being something. Oh, we have people. Hey, hold oh, please. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? Not bad. Can we get here? Yeah, so the last two hours we're open, we do the thing called the date night, uh, which is two people, $25, and you can stay till I close at 11. Okay, awesome. Let's do that. All right. $28.75. Whenever you're ready. You want a receipt? Yes, This is so cool. Thank you. You, of course, you said yes, please, and I hit the thing that, like, said no receipt. <laughs> uh, new receipt. Print. There you go. Thank you so much. All right, and I'll stamp your hands just to remind me that you paid. There you go. Everything's set to free play. Just hit the button and go. Uh, if you get a stuck ball or something seems weird, give me a shout, and I'll come hit it with a hammer. Every time I go to an arcade, I'm going to think about people on the internet watching me. <laughs> We can go back to the browser and look at like shitty movies. <laughs> what have I have seen? I have that scene. I have this scene. I have that scene. Or just camera safari adventure time. I think we'll do this one for a little while. Here. All right, so maybe maybe we will see a few more people in tonight. Well, we have seen a few more people in tonight. 
But maybe we'll see even the fewer more people in today. That does the case. Huh? Spike's just here to check out the Canadian names. Canada has the best looking women in the world. You know that, right? It's true. So we have our uh, we have our Japanese uh, soft drinks that have the marble in it. So this is actually called Marble Pop. This is their original one. It's sort of I can't tell if it's yeah, it's clear. I'm gonna try it. I don't know what it uh, I don't know what it tastes like. It's probably just like a. 7 up kind of thing. So on these, so there's a little marble on the top, right? When you get the little cap, and you somehow pop the center bit out. And then you put this here, and you push it down. I wonder if I can do this right here. And then the marble goes down. I spill it all over myself. Eat the marble. So it it tastes kind of like Guys want some nest tea or something? No? Okay. I'm on dieting. Oh. <laughs> My pizza just arrived. I'm gonna look at it. Oh, that looks good. You don't get to see my pizza. I'm sorry. this all over the place. All right, so the original flavor marble pop tastes a little bit like There's a taste there. It's a flavor that I, I can't put my finger on it. Juicy fruit gum. A little bit. Yeah, you know, if I had to... That's, that's the closest thing I can think of to describe what this tastes like, is Wrigley's Juicy Fruit Gum. Kind of. A little bit. It's okay. It's okay. 
the um, the grape one that I had, um, that one was really good. And then the other one, the Ramune original flavor was kind of like this too. Tastes a little like bubblegum, kind of a little bit. But yeah, not a, not too shabby. Okay, I guess. And I had them. Let's let's go over there together, shall we? switch camera adventure safari cameras Whoop. there it is all right so I had gotten um, so these this is what I just tried I had gotten these in uh, blueberry as well and then I have the remove the, the melon the original and the light lychee flavor. I had a grape one as well. I had got in, I don't remember how many of the blue ones, and they were gone like pretty much that day. <laughs> the kids went and they saw the blue one, they just went nuts over. So we have the, the green apple ones. Not, you know, kids like blue stuff. I don't know why. That's the Warheads blue is the one that we saw the most of of that as well and same with the little chubby drinks I don't know if it's blue and those 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 awesome. although in the pop shop the the lime sells the most but yeah kids just like blue stuff and why wouldn't you like the blue stuff uh oh uh oh this is almost we're getting should we do a wormhole? Maybe it's too early for a wormhole. What am I doing? Right here? No. Right here? Yes. That's what I was trying to do. There we go. Alright. Jones Soda, yes, we have Jones Soda. Uh, that's all that I have left. I haven't been able to get the green Jones Soda for a while, the, the green apple ones. Um, and I just sold the last of my sour melon, whatever it was. But... Yeah, the, the, the marble ones have, they're I think that people like them because it's such a novelty. Like, and what's really funny about these is I just got to get one kid in the arcade to buy one, and then every kid in the arcade will want one too. That's what happened the other day. Twice that's happened, where some kid gets one, they open it up, they, the other kids see them opening it up, pop the thing, the marble, and then they're like, yay! And then every other kid's like, I want to do that too. So I just need to hire some kids to come in here like we get a bunch of kids in here I just like get some kid on call hey buddy get down here buy a marble pop and they come down they get it and then I'll sell all the other ones to all the other kids <laughs> yeah it's juicy fruit gum Jones Soda is bomb. Yes. Matthew, you'll be you'll be my my marble pop shell. <laughs> I guess that's what that would be, right? 
that and uh, uh, I need I need a shill to come in here and buy chips because the same thing kind of happens with chips. Someone sees someone eating chips and then someone else is like, oh, chips sound really good. I sold my uh, my last of my giant lava lamps yesterday. There was a, a girl was in here looking at all the different lava lamps and uh, like, I really want a lava lamp. And then she saw we had the big one. She's like, go big or go home, I guess. So they, they got the last of the big ones. I still have a couple of 16 inch ones and then I have all of these here. And uh, I thought I would sell more of the candle lava lamps. Those are really cool. Candle lava lamp, little tea, tea lights in here, and uh, it, it makes it do its lava thing. And they're so cute, look how little they are. They're made of porcelain. Kind of thought we'd sell more of those. To, like, you know, mom's around Christmas time. That's what I was pitching uh, when people were coming in and looking for Christmas gifts or something. I'm like, your mom would like one of these. <laughs> Trying to, to get, you know, it, it looked nice in her kitchen, don't you think? It's, it, it lets your mom know she's still groovy, but, you know, practical. <laughs> Chips are gateways to hamburgers, and I'm not cool with hamburgers. That's where I draw the line. What's wrong with hamburgers? Well, see now. So I was already, I had already broken down. I've been, I've been working on this uh, boiling grape soda for the last like three hours, four hours, and now I've opened this thing, and now I'm just like. I'm gonna be burping all night. <laughs> to drink more coffee. Did those other people leave? Did they leave when I wasn't looking? Adventure time. All right, let's go over here. Look, bust a move. I'm trying to do this one handed. Uh oh. Green. There. Put that one there too. Oops. There we go. Alright, we'll put that there. We'll just put that one there for now. Like these little guys. Yeah. They're so happy. Yay! All right. Oh no, I lost. Bust a move, such a great little game. <clears throat> Perky yet practical is the name of my Julia Child cover band. 
Julia Child's band, she was like kind of like early punk rock, wasn't she? Like the spiky necklace and she did vocals like, oh, yeah, she was awesome. Why do you keep that? I was, I was right there, smoke for it. I'm gonna go smoke some crack. Meth Gator. I'm the Meth Gator. Arr. What if I could set up the camera and play some Big Lebowski? Oh, good, Sophia. You saw you saw the you saw me playing the game. I was hoping you were still on so that you could see it. So actually, let me go back over there and uh, let's look at it. Because the, the cabinet's in pretty good shape. You haven't really had a chance to see it. So let's let's look, shall we? So it doesn't have anything on the side of it. Just a standard kind of thing. So it's got these little melty parts here, but this is just a an acrylic or Lexan type color covering, so I'll be able to make a new one of these pretty easily and those will, other than that everything looks fine it's a little worn down for this laxan too so it's probably time to replace it but monitor is actually in pretty good shape it's bright enough and then it's a single cartridge so it's got the, the place for the little marquee thing and it even has a, a pei uh, game stamp still from 2000. I wonder if they still require these. If they still have this. What is it? Entertainment device license. I'll have to look that up. Because you might, if you're if you're uh, doing coin drop, you might actually still need one of these. There's another one on. Um, one up here from 90 91 and this one's 2000 you might actually still need these for some things What was that called? A device license? I'm going to look that up. PEI device. Amusements. Amusement device operation permit. When do I need an amusement device operation permit? Any business that operates for profit an amusement ride or device must hold a valid amusement device operation uh, permit. How much is the fee? $110 per ride is the cost of the amusement device operation permit. Good for one year. But I don't think that this is... I don't think this is for a video game, though.
type of amusement device, model number, serial number, manufacturer, year, date purchase, name of previous owner. Oh my god. Maximum numbers of persons. So this is maximum speed RPM type of, So this is uh, like if you, yeah, this is not for a video game. That's a different type of thing. What was that called? Entertainment device license. Not an amusement one. I put amusement. So entertainment device. Yeah. Entertainment. Application for an entertainment device license. I think they've gotten rid of it. There's a link to it. link to this uh, application for an entertainment device license but when you go to it it's not here so they must not do that anymore so I have to do the amusement devices which is like little rides and uh, okay yeah uh, hang gliders hay rides golf carts <laughs> untethered balloons boats bicycles live animals oh that's it does not apply to those things <laughs> Hovercraft, soapbox racers. But what does it apply? Uh, safety code, <coughs> permits, inspections. And a list of all the things that it doesn't apply to, but what does it apply to? I guess everything else? Huh. Alright. Alright, enough of that. <laughs> Can't stop here, this is backcountry. <laughs> I have to start an all bikini live stream from seventh of summer. Yeah, sure. I I look awesome in a bikini, <laughs> especially after I shave my head again. Thanks for the stream, unicycles. Okay, so it's uh it's we've been doing this for an hour and a half now, and uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna end it because I am just too tired to keep going, and I've I've resorted to looking up law on. Uh, on my live stream, so uh, nobody wants to look up law on a on an arcade live stream. So I'm gonna go. All right. So thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, watch yeah, watch your cocaine crab from outer space movie. And next week you can tell us how it was. Maybe I'll see if I can find it and uh, check it out myself. All right, guys. So we'll see you later.